Welcome to the Connect Your Health to Life coaching podcast. I'm your host, Seth Lusk. I'm a master certified life coach and published author with a decade long background working in the health, wellness, and fitness industry as a personal trainer, nutrition specialist, and life coach. If you're anything like me or the clients that I work with, then you might be struggling with some confidence issues or struggling with feeling like you're not living your most fulfilling or authentic life. You may be trying to figure out why you have these amazing desires for what your most fulfilling life would look like, but you can't seem to create consistent action in your life to reflect those desires. So join me as we dive in deep on what it means to truly live a fulfilled and authentic life from the inside out. We're going to look from the perspective of an empowered mindset and uncover some of the reasons why you might be what's holding yourself back from living that most fulfilling life. But don't worry, this isn't about blame, guilt, or shame. This is about empowering you to see. I'm going to break through some of the biggest illusions and myths that we've all been taught to believe along the way, and I'm so excited to have you with me on this journey. So my only question for you is, are you ready to start living your most fulfilling life once and for all? Then let's get started, shall we? Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. For those of you listening in for the first time, welcome, welcome. You definitely picked an interesting episode to join in on today, and I know I say that every week. This week, it is going to be a little bit different, though, and that's what makes this week's episode particularly interesting. Um, Normally, I have an outline that I type out and I sit down in front of my computer because I want to make sure that the episodes that I put out are high-quality episodes for you all and offer you all a very, you know, formatted, very easy-to-follow flow of information and insight from me that, that you guys can take and use in your own life to find your own authentic path forward. So this week, I dropped the outline. Um, no, I didn't actually drop it. I literally just was at my work studio and I normally record my podcast episodes at home in my at-home office because the sound acoustics are a lot better. And I was in the middle of a workout at my work studio and I had this, I don't know, this like voice inside of my head reminding me of some things that I wanted to talk about in the podcast episode that I hadn't included in my outline yet. And I just had this burden almost sitting on me saying, you need to just go ahead and talk about this. Just talk about it. Talk about it from your heart. Don't follow the outline. Just speak from the heart about what it is you want to say on this topic. And I decided, you know what? I grabbed my phone. I picked it up. I turned on the recording app. The sound quality is definitely not the same. And um, I'm not following an outline. So I kind of repeat things. I stumble on my words, whatever. But I spoke from my heart to you guys about this topic today. And it's so important so important for me to talk about. So many of you out there feel stuck sitting in spaces of this doesn't work for me. Life doesn't work the same for me. Why am I not successful like other people? What do these successful people have that I don't? And we have this we're, we have this idea that somehow there are just certain people out there that have certain personality types, certain whatever types or whatever it is that you believe that they have that you might not have that makes them able to succeed in this world, but you can't. And the truth is, my friends, that's a bunch of bullshit. It is. Um... I'm going to go ahead and forewarn you all ahead of time. If you have kids in the room, I do curse quite a bit in this episode. I uh, So you might want to listen to this alone if, um, if you, you have some sensitive ears in the room. But I speak from the heart. And what I'm speaking about today, my friends, is about this ability to face rejection. What is your rejection number? So it's, it's this willingness, but not just willingness, this commitment almost to asking to step up and step into rejection because we want it. We want it as a part of our process to getting to our goal, our dream. And in this episode today, I'm going to talk to you about what that means, what that looks like, and why it is that we want to do it, how I put this into practice in my own life, and how I I teach my clients to put it into practice in their life, and how it changes the way you show up for the game of life being a human, and what it means to grow and change and invent and create and be the badass that you are here to be and show the world what you're here to show us. So I hope you all enjoy this episode. Again, I speak straight from the heart without an outline. Um, I'm going to just jump right into it. Here's my recording that I made for my work studio. Okay, guys? So enjoy the episode today. 
So I want to talk with you all about something today, and you'll probably notice that the sound quality is quite different on this recording. I'm actually at my work studio right now, just finishing a workout. I had a whole script planned out for the podcast episode today, and that's usually what I do is I, I write out an outline slash script of what I want to talk with you all about, just so I don't lose my thoughts, what, what all I want to cover, because I want to make sure that I give you all the best quality as far as these podcast episodes go. I want to provide you all with the most um, helpful information and insight that I can. But some of that insight just comes from pure inspiration that I feel as I'm out here exploring the world in the most authentic way for me. And sometimes these ideas come to me in ways that I can't really get to a piece of paper to write down fast enough. And as I was doing my workout today and thinking about what all I wanted to talk with you all about in the podcast today, I started thinking about some stuff that I was like, I didn't include that in my outline, and that's quite important. And I started thinking, you know what? I actually want to approach this topic from a totally different perspective than how I wrote my outline. And I don't want to wait until I get home and set up my computer and set up my laptop and um, you know set up my, my microphone and set up Audacity and do all of this stuff to record. I want to record what it is that's going on in my head right now because I feel like it's important for you all to, to hear this and know this and hear me expressing this to you straight from my heart, not, not from a script, not from an outline, but straight from my heart to you all. Um, this episode will probably be shorter than normal, but I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. It's going to be really interesting. I'm going to talk with you all about what I call your rejection number and what that says about your willingness to go after your dreams and succeed. And what I mean by succeed is to really know what it is that you want and to go after it until you make it happen, until you create that result that you're looking for in your life. In essence, and in form, it can be in form, you know, but being able to really produce it in a fulfilling way in your life. So what is a failure number? Or what is a rejection number? The rejection number that we're talking about. So when I talk about what is your rejection number, here's what I mean. If we look throughout history at everybody who has ever gone about creating change in this world, someone who's invented something, something, someone who's had a dream or a goal that nobody has ever done before. And up until that point, it was just thought to not be humanly possible. And possibility, we've talked about this before, possibility is this, this combination of thoughts and beliefs that we have about ourselves, that we have about life, that we have about what can limit us and what doesn't have to limit us. Many times these thoughts and beliefs come from things that other people have taught us, said to us, that we've heard, that we've just gathered from evidence that we've collected throughout life. And I use the word evidence with air quotes around it because that evidence is also very subjective. It's based on a lot of human experience, which is subjective. It's based on very limited evidence. It's based on very limited truth and reality. And so when we, we see these people, they seem larger than life to us. They just get out there. And they create these things in the world that no one thought was possible before. I mean, look at, look at people who invented the electric car, the person, the Wright brothers, who, who, you know, finally proved that humans are capable of flying, that we can get a plane off of the ground and humans can fly. The invention of the vaccine, the invention of electricity, the invention of the telegram, the invention of so many different things, boats, cars, all of these things that at one point in time were not thought to be humanly possible. But people, looked at the boundaries of what they thought was humanly possible and asked, what if? What if? But they didn't just stop at what if. They got out there and they started taking actions that questioned that boundary, that asked actions that asked what if. And we live in a society nowadays that glorifies destination, that glorifies product, that glorifies result. So much so that we ignore the most important part about invention, about innovation, about creation, about testing the boundaries of humanity. And I'm talking about the process of learning. The process of growing is about learning. And what we call failure is learning. And we're so terrified of failure because we're so destination-focused. 
We're so destination focused that the idea of going out there and taking action and not getting the result that you want, hearing someone say words that sound like rejection to you, hearing those words, they sound like what we call failure. So what do we do? We all get out there, we buy the books, we listen to the podcasts, we, you know, hire the the gurus to tell us how to, how to. But here's the thing. You will never know how you do something until you do it. And this is where I think the coaching industry gets so messed up and so many people are jaded by the coaching industry is because we have a lot of people out there calling themselves coaches that are really, really what I would call an advisor, a mentor, a guru. They're telling you their how-to, how they did it. And therefore, you go into it thinking that process will work for you. But here's the thing. Each life on this planet is so individual, so uniquely different, not just in the realities of the human experience, but also in the perception of each of those massively diverse real human experiences. And these perceptions create so many truths within us about what is possible for us who we are, what we believe about ourselves, what we believe about the world around us, and therefore what is possible for us. And because of this, no one else's how-to is going to work for you. But here's the thing. We're so focused on results. We're so focused on destination. We want a how-to because we want to get there as fast as possible. And even if that means that the getting there is getting to the point where we say, oh, see, that didn't work. I guess this isn't for me. Give up. That is the destination that so many of us rush towards so many times. We want so badly to get to the comfort zone that even the idea of giving up, running to that point of being like, oh, see, this didn't work for me. Guess I should just give up feels more comfortable to us than what these people out here that are creating innovations, creating new creations, inventions, showing us what is possible for for humanity, what they are willing to go through. And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about the rejection number. It's actually an activity that I take a lot of my clients through, and I make a little game out of it. And what I ask someone is to think about, think about something. If you know Beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is just imminent. It is written in your destiny. There is no way to change it. That you will produce that dream, that goal that you have. It's, there's no question of if. It's just a matter of how and when. And you figuring it out. Okay, so if you knew this, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there is just, it is a fact in your life. But you also knew that part of that fact meant that you will step out there, you will take an action, and you will face words, you will face actions that feel like rejection to you. You will step up to the plate, the you know proverbial plate of life, with that baseball bat, and that pitcher's going to throw the ball at you, and you're going to swing, and you're going to miss. You're going to get a different result. You're going to hit a foul ball. You're going to strike out. If you knew that you were going to do this for a certain number of times before you hit the home run, before you hit the grand slam, if you knew that was the truth and there was a specific number of times that you were going to do this, what would that number be? Have you ever thought to ask yourself that? How many times, how many times would it take for you to step up, face rejection, face different, face different results than what you anticipated? How many times do you think you would go through that that would guarantee that after that amount of times, no matter what, you're going to get the result you want. Is it 20 times? Is it 30 times? Is it 50 times? Is it 75 times? I like to go with the number 100. I do this a lot with people who are interested in going out there and dating, but they're like, oh, there's no point in dating. I've done dating before. It doesn't work for me. Nobody wants to be with me. Nobody loves me. No one. The, I'm, I'm never going to find the right person. Usually to find out that the number of dates that they've been on is maybe like 10 And I'm like, okay, so what if we said, do you think that if you went on a hundred dates that you would meet the person you're going to, you're going to, you're going to spend your life with? If you know the criteria of what you're looking for, you know what it is that you want in a relationship. Do you think in a hundred dates you could find the person that ticks those boxes? Do you think a hundred is enough? Is it 150, 200? What's the number? I usually pick a hundred because usually people like, yeah, I think if I went on a hundred dates and I'm like, okay, so let's think about that. If you know 
that 100 dates is what it's going to take to meet that person that's going to check all the boxes. That's going to be the person you want to spend your life with, and they're going to look at you and realize you're the person they want to spend their life with. Would you be willing to go on those 100 dates? Usually people will say yes. And there's, a, there's an interesting reason why. They're not willing to go on one more date and feel rejected again. You know why? Because they think that immediately after that date, what they'll have to experience is this feeling of hopelessness, this feeling of regret, this feeling of I'm not good enough and I'll never meet that person. And this feeling of regret is so, it's such a useless indulgence when we use it to beat our past selves up, when we use it to say that I shouldn't have done that, what good does that do you right in this moment? You should have done it because if you hadn't done it, guess what? You wouldn't know what you know right now that's telling you that you want to do something different in the future. That's what regret is there for. Not to just lay there and beat ourselves up and tell ourselves how we made a mistake and how we shouldn't have done that. Regret is there to remind us that, hey, you've got something important ahead of you here. And the way you just did this, it didn't give you the result that you wanted. So guess what? You have the opportunity now to look at that and say, hmm, what can I do differently next time? That's what regret wants to show you. But instead, we use it to beat ourselves up and make ourselves feel so hopeless and useless and like we're such a a fuck up in our life. Like we shouldn't have done that and I'm so stupid. How did I not know? I should have known better. And what that doesn't do anything for us moving forward. Regret in that sense, in that context, is absolutely useless for us. And it holds us stagnant in our lives. It holds us sitting in a place of inaction. And then we wonder why we're not producing the results we want in our life. Well, of course, you're not getting back out there and going on a third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth date because you're too busy sitting there feeling sorry for yourself and telling yourself how you're too stupid, how you're not good enough, how you, you know, are never going to, no one's going to ever love you. And you just sit there in an action and then wonder why you're not getting the results you want. What's going to get you the results you want is getting back up and getting back out there. That's your rejection number. So if our rejection number is a hundred, let's think about that. What does this do differently for us when we think, okay, After 100 dates, I'm going to meet that person, that person that's going to tick all the boxes. Then you know what happens? I go on that date and I'm thinking I'm on date number 20 right now. So I've got 79 more dates to go on before I meet this person. So you know what this date is about? This date is about practice. This date is about fun. This date is about showing up and seeing what dating is all about. What do I have to learn about dating here? What don't I know yet? What could I learn on this date? What kind of fun thing could I try and totally get rejected for and be like, okay, well, that didn't get me the result I want. What do I do differently next time? What do I learn from this? And we can almost laugh about it. And it's funny when I, when I teach my clients this and they, they go back out into the world and it doesn't have to just be dating. It could be about inventing something, pitching your idea to a company, asking for um, a pay raise, asking for a promotion, asking for a brand new job in a brand new field that you haven't worked in before, you know, going to, to college and, and working on your master's thesis. So many different ways in which this can apply. When we approach it from the perspective of I'm going to do this a hundred times. And I'm going to face what feels like rejection a hundred times. I'm choosing that ahead of time. I'm going to do it a hundred times before I get the result that I want. Then guess what? There isn't that downtime. There isn't that downtime between the feeling of rejection and when we put ourselves back out there. It was supposed to happen. So often we go into these dates, we go into these job pitches, we go into these requests for a pay raise, these requests for a promotion, and we go in it with so much pressure on ourselves to achieve a result that we forget that we're in this process to learn and be a human. We're in this process and that part of being a human is feeling rejection and then learning from it. And that, my friends, is being a human. That is how we grow. But we put so much pressure on ourselves to receive a result that when we face the rejection, we say, oh, that shouldn't have happened. That wasn't supposed to happen. Oh my God, that was so terrible. And then we go back to that space where we sit in inaction. Oh no, you shouldn't try that again. Remember what happened last time? You got rejected. But what if instead we're like, okay, rejection, I planned for that. So what do I learn here? then there's no downtime. We put in the application at another job. We put in a request for another promotion. We put in a request for another pay raise. We go on the dating app and look for another person to go on a date with. 
Because guess what? I've got 79 more times to go. I've got 79 more times to feel that rejection and learn. What else do I have out there to learn? And by the time we get to that 100th time, we're like PhD doctorates in applying for that raise, applying for that new job, applying for that new career path, going on the date, pitching that invention to a company. We're like experts at it. And you know what's crazy is that by the time we get there to that number 100, which usually people don't even get to number 100, normally it's, it's far fewer than that, but when we're willing to go to that 100, when we do finally get the yes, here's what, here's what separates people who, are, who get out there and create the life they want from the people that sit in victimhood, is that they become, they become rejection acceptant. In other words, what I mean by that is their, their quotient for adversity, their ability to feel adversity, to feel rejection is so high that it doesn't affect them. It's just a part of the process for them. It's not bad. It doesn't stop them. It doesn't, you know, yeah, sure. The, it do, does it feel great to, be re, to, to feel rejection? No, it doesn't feel great. But at the same time, it's like they have this, this voice inside of them that says, that was supposed to happen. That was supposed to happen. So what do we do with that? And that, my friends, creates a whole different perspective, a whole different set of actions that follow versus that feeling of, oh my God, that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm such a failure. I'm such a loser. Oh my God, these people probably think I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. I look like such an idiot. Oh my God, I'm such a loser in life. Everyone's going to hate me. No one's going to like me. No one's ever going to accept me. No one's ever going to give me that job. No one's ever going to want to date me. No one's ever going to accept my invention. I'm never going to be able to invent something good enough. My business is never going to succeed. No one's ever going to hire me. All of these voices that put us in that position where we just sit there in the corner and hold ourselves in pity and in fear and shame and in guilt and in should have, could have, would haves. And the difference between people that do that and the people that get out there and we wonder like, what is it about them? What does this person have that I don't have? It's not something they have. It's something that they choose. And what I call it is a rejection number. They know ahead of time that part of the game of being a human, part of showing up and bringing to the world what we are here to authentically bring is to show up and have someone completely misunderstand you and understand that that's just part of being a human. And it doesn't mean anything about you. It means you learn something about what is possible for how another person can perceive you. And what do you want to do differently in the future, if anything? Or maybe just people that want to see you that way aren't your people, and that's okay. They're allowed to be in this world. They're allowed to see you that way. That's okay. It doesn't mean anything about you. Usually we want to change people's opinions about us because we think that their opinion about us means something about us that hurts so deeply. And so we think we need to change it as fast as possible because we feel like we need to get away from that hurt. But what if instead we saw this feeling as being just part of the process? It's what I'm here to learn. It's part of being a human. People misunderstanding me is part of putting myself out there and moving towards the actualization, the manifestation of my life, my dreams, my goals, my success, and what I'm after. How differently do people show up when they believe this about their life? You know how differently they show up? Look at the people that you look to and think, oh, I wish I could be like that. I wish I could do that with my life. I wish what this person says is true was true about my life when they say all I have to do is believe and get out there and do. My friends, that is the truth. It's not about buying the right book, the right person's how-to. Sure, having coaches work with you is great because coaches are going to help you find your truth, your how-to, not someone else's. And if you have a coach telling you the how-to formula, be very skeptical there. If they're not stimulating you to look for your how-to, be very skeptical. Are they really a coach? Or are they a mentor trying to sell their system? Which sometimes we can look at a person's system and we can be inspired by it. We can take bits and pieces of it and find out how they fit into our authentic truth, our authentic experience of life. And we can do something with it in our authentic way to find our authentic how. But if you're following a step-by-step -step process from someone and either expecting that it's going to give you the result that you want or hoping that it doesn't so that you can see, see, say, see, it didn't work. I guess it's just not for me. So that you can give up and go back to the comfort 
discomfort of hiding in your corner and playing victim and playing small in your life and hiding from your truth, if you're waiting for that, if that's what you're looking for, my friends, if that's what you're after, if that's what you're chasing, it's not going to bring you the life that you're thinking, oh, I can't live that life because I'm not that kind of person. My friends, every person on this planet has the potential to get out there and create and manifest. Make things happen in your life. You feel like you just got knocked down? Fuck yes. That's a great position to be in. Because you know what? That's the feeling of rejection. That's the feeling of, I just learned something. Now, what is it? Get yourself back up. There's nothing broken about you. You're not ashamed. You're not broken in any way, shape, or form. You don't need to feel guilt You don't need to feel embarrassed. There's nothing wrong with you. You just learned a lesson. And what sets apart a person who falls down and stays down and a person who falls down and doesn't even see it as a fall down but gets back up or gets up and keeps moving forward is that rejection number. That rejection quotient. How much much are you willing to? If you know that your dream, your goal is inevitable, how much are you willing, how many times are you willing to put yourself out there and say, yes, I'm here. I know you're going to reject me. That's okay. I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn. I'm here to practice. And I'm here to become the biggest badass I can be. The biggest badass version of me because I'm the only version of me on this planet. I'm here to show you all something. And every time I step up and get rejected, I learn better how to show you all what I am here to show this world. My friends, every single one of you has that potential inside of you. I know it's hard to believe from the perspective you're looking at the world from. I get that. I'm not here to offer you a how-to either. I'm here to offer you a hand. I'm here to offer you support. I'm here to ask the right questions to guide you to your truth and your how-to. But I'm not here to tell you a how-to. I'm here to tell you that you have everything inside of you to find that how-to that works for you and causes you to show up in your life in a way that causes someone else to look at your life and be like, holy fuck, why can't I do that? Each and every one of you listening right now has that potential has that potential. And it's not a matter of finding the right how-to. It's not a matter of looking out there to find the right how-to. It's a matter of recognizing what the human experience of growth is like. Stepping up and feeling rejection and saying hell yes to it instead of, oh my God, what did I do wrong? Oh my God, what, what shouldn't I have done? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so ashamed. I'm so guilty. Oh, I should, I'm so stupid. No, it's stepping up, feeling that rejection and being like, fuck yes. So glad that happened. Now I get to learn. Now I get to grow. I get to add a new skill, a new notch in my tool belt. Something else that I can show up the next time I'm going to get rejected and do it that much better, that much more differently. Get me that much closer to that 100th time where I get the yes. And by the time I get to that number 100, I'm going to be such a badass. This is what separates the people that show up in their life and create versus the people that don't show up in their life and sit and complain and say, you know, in their, in their little blanket of, of, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on in my life. There's something wrong with me. No, it won't work. I don't have it. I'm not like you. That's the difference between these people. It's not because there's something innately different about any of us. It's because some of us choose to show up in life and look at life from the perspective of yes to rejection, saying yes to it on purpose. And my friends, I know you might think because maybe you haven't known me for very long. Maybe you only know me through this podcast. Maybe you've only known me for a couple of years, but you can ask any of my friends that have known me my entire life. I've been in that position before where I believed that I didn't have what it takes, that there was something so broken about me, that there was something so wrong with me that, you know, the things that people said that that were successful in life didn't apply to me. Poor, poor me. I'm so confused. What's wrong with me? Someone give me my how-to. Someone help me. Someone pick me up and, and give me the way. I was in that position and I did it for so long until I chose, chose to look at my beliefs, chose to call myself out on my own bullshit and say, Seth, this is why you're stuck here. It's not because of anything going on out there. It's because you're afraid to get out there and do something and have someone say, ha no. 
And then make that mean something positive for you. Make that mean you did something right. And then do it again, expecting that they're going to say no. And then do it again, expecting that they're going to laugh at you. And then do it again until the hundredth time you show up and their jaws hit the floor. Because they're like, wow, where did you learn to do that? And I'm like, these 99 times right here that I showed up and let you all laugh at me. Let you all think that I had no idea what I was doing and the whole time I've been building this arsenal here and now I've got a tool set so fucking big, try to stop me. That is the difference between people that show up in their life and make it happen and people who choose not to. It's not because of something that you're born with. It's not a a personality quality that you're born with. It's something we develop in ourselves. So I'm here to ask you, what is your rejection number? If you know... If you just, just imagine knowing that the, the, the goal that you have is inevitable, it is a truth, it is a fact, it's going to happen, how many times are you willing to learn? How many times are you willing to hear a no and learn before you get the yes? How many times is it? Usually the people that you see and you admire and you think that there's just something about them that you don't have, their number's quite big. They might even say 100 and then they get to 100 and they're like, you know what, I'll go to 150. I'll go to 200. I'll go to 1,000. Who cares? I've got this life. What else is it here for? But to learn, to show up, face rejection, and be like, thank you. Thank you. That's one more tool in my tool belt. One more thing I get to learn about life. One more experience I get to have and be like, wow, I didn't expect that. That's something I can use in the future. That's the difference, my friends. So let's get out there. Let's discover what is our rejection number? How many times... Is it, How many times is your goal worth it to you to get up there, face rejection, and say, thank you, yes, I wanted that, and then do it again? That's the special sauce, my friends. That's the secret. That is what you think that everyone's hiding from you in the world that you know makes people so special that you don't have. It's just that right there. No sitting in that confusion. You know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You know what you're supposed to do? You're supposed to get out there and try until you figure out how you do it. No one's going to give you the how-to. You learn that when you do it, my friend. And you learn it when you do it by being willing to step out there. Put yourself 100% on display and say, this is me. Give me your nose so that I can learn and I'm going to show up again. And then we rise, we create, and we show the world what we have inside of us, because that's what we're here for. Each and every one of us has something so unique and so special to show this world. And so many of us are hiding that from the world, and we need it. The world needs it. It's not even just that it'd be nice. The world needs you to show up, my friend. We all have something inside of us that is needed in this world. That's why you are here. You are here and worthy by design, not by decision. And We need you to show up. We need you to raise that rejection number and step forward. Let someone tell you no and learn. Because even they learn when they tell you no. And then they see you rise up and succeed anyways. We need you to show up. We need you to step into rejection by choice. And love every second of it. That's the human experience. That's the growth experience. That's learning. Let's stop calling it failure. Let's call it what it is. And let's start getting out there and being the badasses that we're here to be. That's what I've got for you all today. That's what I've got. Straight from the heart, no script, no outline. I want to know, what is your rejection number? How many times are you willing to get a no to get your yes that is inevitable? How ready are you for that success? I'm here for you when you want to talk, when you need a hand, when you need support, when you need guidance. I love you all. And I'm ready to see you all start showing up and showing us what you're here for. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to share for you all, with you all, what I'm here for. I'm excited to get my nose. I'm excited to get my rejection. So let's step up. And until we meet again here next week, my friends, ciao. Hey, thank you for listening in this week. I hope you enjoyed the content of this episode. If you did, please subscribe or follow this podcast to receive the newest episodes every week as I bring them to you here on the Connect Your Health to Life coaching channel. 
Ratings, reviews, and comments are always appreciated. These allow me to know more of what my listeners would like in the podcast and allow for more people who may be searching for a podcast just like this one to find the Connect Your Health to Life coaching channel. If you would like more information about me and the work that I do with my clients one-on-one, then please visit my website at www.slch.ch. Again, that is www.slch.ch. You can also find me on social media on Instagram at sethlusk underscore coaching. Again, that is sethlusk underscore coaching. And on Facebook in my free Facebook group community called A Healthy Life Connection. We would love to have you in the group, and it's only three membership questions that you have to answer to join. And again, it's entirely free. And if you need any further information or just want to say hello, feel free to send me an email directly at slusk.health at slch.ch. Again, that is slusk.health at slch.ch. Thank you again so much for listening, and I look forward to our next time together. Ciao.